According to United Nations statistics, 80% of productive labor in Africa falls on women's shoulders. Thanks to them, this intricate labyrinth of ethnic groups, languages, and cultural mixtures still stands on its feet, despite the difficulties. In traditional fishing, the men work out at sea, but on land, it is the women who are in charge of handling and selling the fish. This is the most influential person in the market. Her name is Madame Bamba. She buys 90% of all the manta ray and shark that is caught in the country by traditional methods. The fishermen come to sell from all over, from as far as the Arguin Bank in the north. She salts the fish, dries it, and exports it in large shipments that she sends to Ghana once a month. In addition to receiving those who offer their merchandise in her drying room, Madame Bamba walks along the beach every morning in search of the best catches. Prices vary daily, and she negotiates in person. It may seem amazing, but 80% of the jobs that come from the sea in Mauritania have their origin in traditional fishing. With her exports to Ghana, Madame Bamba alone creates work for 500 people. Around her and the hundreds of women who work on the beach, a series of small interrelated jobs are being done that give life to this market. The business of fresh or frozen fish for export is in the hands of the Arab oligarchy. The few attempts on the part of the fishermen to form cooperatives have failed because the large groups in power boycott them. Enterprising initiatives like Madame Bamba's are only possible because she works with fish considered second rate and because of the indefatigable courage with which she faces her problems. Furthermore, the drying and salting of fish is an ancient and traditional technique. For refined palates, it seems antiquated and less than sanitary. But here in West Africa, people love to eat fish this way. And as it happens, for millions of Africans, it is the only fish they have access to. Madame Bamba knows that and takes charge of satisfying that need. Okay, bye bye. While their parents work, children go to the Quranic school that the fishermen themselves provide in a corner of the port. In a country that allots more than 20% of its budget to military spending, systematic education is a privilege available only to a minority. The Quranic schools, directed by Muslim holy men called Mataboots, partially make up for these deficiencies. In them, the children learn grammar, math, and the basic religious tenets of the Quran. But in the modern world, which is also changing at a dizzying rate in Mauritania, this education is not enough. Only those parents willing to make an economic sacrifice can send their children to secondary school, and rarely do they send their daughters. The girls stay at home preparing to become docile wives. Most do not continue their studies. Even today, the ruling social norms force girls into arranged marriages at the age of eight or nine. In the year 2001, only 3% of Mauritanian women have managed to avoid these marriages. These children reciting surahs from the Quran have a life expectancy of 45 years. Only 45 years to fight for a more just and supportive world than that their parents have known.
Moduti Ham is the blacksmith in the port. Most of the anchors, hooks, and other metal riveting used in fishing come from his forge. I to see him nearly every day. Mulu, tell me, where did you learn your trade? My father taught me in Senegal. I started to work there and then I moved to Mauritania. Thanks to this profession, I built my house and could also get married. It's a job that fulfills me because I do it with my own hands. It's a family tradition that goes way back. I make anchors and hooks like these for the fishermen. I take the iron from anywhere. I recycle all kinds of objects that they bring me. Nothing is thrown away here. I can use a piece of a car, an abandoned iron beam. It's all useful to me. Tell me about your son Abdul. Does he go to school or is he only learning the profession here with you? He's not in school right now because it's vacation time. The day school opens again, he'll go back to study. When it's closed, I prefer to have him here with me. Otherwise, he fights with his friends. There's no one to watch him or take care of him on the street. No one to give him advice. He only obeys his parents. Besides, if he does well in school, which is what we all want, good. But if he fails, it would be better for him to know this trade. Then do you consider yourself a lucky man? Are you happy with your life? Yes, very happy. I have worked as hard as I had to and my family has all it needs. To sell more or less is now a question of luck. God has given me everything I have and it is him I thank. We are almost self-sufficient in the port. We have our own docks, and the carpenters who build the boats work on the same beach. The wood comes from the boats that are no longer serviceable, and the blacksmith forges nails from the remains of the large ships that run aground along the coast. The rest is pure will. are fixed up and freshly painted. They keep their old names, but they get a new wardrobe. In Africa, the old retired fishermen comprise a very special group. They remain very active. We don't stick them in a corner. Rather, we take advantage of their knowledge and experience in order to continue what they have left us. In the traditional fishing market, they have their place, a space where every afternoon they gather to talk about the problems that worry them. Their opinion is law for us. When I worked as a fisherman, I was also a teacher for the little children. When I finished work, I'd go to the school to teach a class. That was in the south, where I was born. Later, I came up here and continued doing the same thing. There was no one here. We had to build everything from scratch. When we arrived, there were more jackals in this place than people. 
We have managed to survive without anyone's help. And we are proud of this. If someone loses his house, everyone gets together and helps him build another. But I want you to tell me, what happened to the cooperatives? Before, we used to have an organization and a representative who went to the capital to negotiate with the government. But all kinds of pressures forced us to stop. Now we don't have anything. They don't want us to be united. Sometimes people appear who offer us aid. And God knows where that aid goes. Quatre-vingt-onze, nous t'avons là. Quatre-vingt-quatre-vingt-sept.